Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet here on Metal Messiah Radio. Today, we are happy to have back on the show our special guest, Mr. Jeremy Kling of The Absence. Welcome back to the show, Jeremy. Hey, thanks for having me, and hello, everybody out there. So, Jeremy, last year has been a busy year for you. For those that don't know, Jeremy is also a tour manager and drum tech for so many bands. So what was 2017 like for you and what kind of tours were you working with, Jeremy? It was actually, uh, it was a really busy year this year. I did, um, I kind of transitioned a bit away from doing tour managing and kind of really solidified myself as a front of house engineer. I went um, in March, I went to Europe with Sepultura. We did uh, Creator, Sepultura, Aborted, and Soil Work, which uh, the guitar player for The Absence, which is uh, Taylor Nordberg, he plays bass in Soil Work. So we got the tour in Europe together separately. That was kind of interesting. <laughs> um, so I was tour managing and doing front of house for them, and we did five and a half weeks in Europe. And we ended with two shows in Russia, which was pretty sick. It was my first time there. Um, then I was home for about three weeks, and then it was back out with Sepultura. We did uh, Testament, Sepultura, and Prong in the States. And I did tour managing for Sepultura, front of house for both Prong and Sepultura, and monitors for both bands as well. Um, and then that was seven weeks. And then I took all summer off, because at that point, that Testament tour was my sixth tour within a seven or eight month run. And I was pretty burnt, so mm -hmm. I sat home the summer and just hung out with my kids and wife and just chilled. And uh, went back out with Venom Inc. in um, September and did uh, front of house for them. We were on tour with Goat Whore and Toxic Holocaust and the Convalescents. And uh, yeah, so that was that. And then off to uh, Mexico with Exodus. I did front of house for them. We did a one-off in uh, October. And so did everything run pretty smooth on these tours? I mean, with all the shit that's going on in the world today, I didn't hear too many incidences happen with you guys. No, we were, everything was real smooth. Everything was good. You know, no, no real crazy hiccups, anything like that, other than the, the occasional drunk band member. But, you know, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> fucking rock and roll. <laughs> exactly. Now, Jeremy, what would you say are, like, some good tips for, you know, like, tour managers out there to, to help for a successful tour? Uh, I mean, you know, just be prepared, really. You know, be prepared. Make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed and take good notes. And I don't know. I don't think tour managing is too difficult, honestly. You just treat, treat the band how you'd like to be treated as a touring musician and, you know, go from there. You know, it's, it's a lot of, lot of late nights and a lot of early mornings, but... It's pretty cool. Like the bonds that I built with the Sepultura camp are very, very deep. And these are, I find myself, I mean, because, you know, realistically, we're all, we're all here because of metal. And we're all metal fans. And I mean, I remember being very young and being very much into Sepultura. And now I get random text messages from any of the guys at any moment in time. And I'm just, you know, I just do a good job and you do a good job and you treat people and you grow as friends. Um, and especially if you want longevity in this industry. I mean, this industry is very small and it's very tight knit and everybody knows everybody and everybody's friends. So if you're a good dude and you do good work, then, you know, good things come from that. And now you also mentioned your wife. So you guys just got married this year, right? Yep. We just got married. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, um, we, we will all be able to see her, um, some of her fantastic photography skills in this new absence record. Oh, nice. She actually, um, I guess I can spoil it a little bit, but um, <laughs> we took some really cool photos underwater, and I guess that's where I'll leave it. Uh, oh, she cool. really nice underwater housing, and we did some very creative underwater photos, which are inside the CD, which are it's pretty killer. Oh, nice. So we'll be have that to look forward to. And Jeremy, so give people just a little bit of background on the absence for those that aren't familiar with the band. Um, well, think of Carcass and Arch Enemy. They got real drunk one night in Amsterdam and created something that had a death t-shirt. And, uh, <laughs> there we go. So it, it's like, it's, it's very much a, uh, Florida blend of death metal mixed with melodic death metal from Scandinavia. And it's, um, 
you know, it's it's brutal at times. It's extr- it's it's some of the most beautiful melodic passages you've ever heard at times, mixed with some fucking Iron Maiden triple triple uh, guitars, you know, here and there. It's it's pretty killer. It's good stuff. So tell us who's currently in the band now, Jeremy. Uh, we have this is the lineup that we've had now for two years. So it's. Um, Joey Concepcion, he's a guitar player who is a bit of like an internet dude, and he's a fantastic guy. He also is playing with Armageddon, which is Chris Amott's other band, and I know that he's out with, um, I think he's like one of, uh, like Jamie Josta's like main guitar player guy, he goes out with his, uh, his solo project whenever they go touring. Um, Taylor Nordberg, of course, he's the other guitar player. Um, Taylor is a bass player for Soil Work now. I don't know if that's like super permanent. I don't know what's happening with that. I might have just given something away, but I guess that's all right. Um, and uh, Jamie Stewart, of course. Jamie and I are the original founding members in the absence. Um, and Mike Leon, uh, our bass player that we've had since 2007. Um, he's still he's still in it to win it. We're we're moving forward with that. You know, he's extremely busy with Soulfly still. He actually was just out with that. Uh, roots and he had to fill in for Rizzo on guitar so he had to learn he was telling us he was like man I had to cram the entire like 20 song set in a night he had to learn it all on guitar and he only he only knew how to play some of those songs on bass you know he he went out there so the show could go on still which is pretty killer and that's so, uh, yeah I was gonna say that, that's it that, you know that's our lineup <laughs> And so today we're going to play everybody your new single. Now, is this off an upcoming EP or full length? Uh, it'll be a full length. And the name of the record is A Gift for the Obsessed. Oh, okay. So now you guys just also signed with a new label. So tell us about that and what that label's all about because it's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. It's um, The name of the label is In Theory Audio. And it's not your typical label like your New Kids or Blasts or your Metal Blades. Um, it's it's very interesting. It's more of like a grassroots home feeling, uh, not not by way of their reach or anything like that, but by way of like how the bands are treated on the label. Um, most of us know that what's happening these days are like dreaded 360 deals where the label owns a piece of everything that you do and they own all of your music. You can never do anything with it without asking permission from them. Um, it's a bit of a totally different deal here without giving out too many specifics. Um, we are, we are owners of our music and we are completely 50 50 with the label. And it's not, it's not how, how other labels typically run which is, it's pretty cool. It made us go like, all right, well, yeah, let's fucking do that. And then, like, distribution is going to be worldwide, so we have everything else that we, you know, could want. So, pretty good. And also, I just wanted to mention that this label is run by professionals in the industry who have been in the industry for many years with some other major labels, which is probably one of the reasons why they started their own label, because this way they could do things the way they wanted and how they wanted to treat the band. So I found that all to be very interesting. It's not just some pop-up label. These people have been around for a long time that long run time, this yeah. label. Yeah. So yeah, Marco Barbieri, he mm-hmm. was at Century Media for 13 years, and then before that he spent five years at Metal Blade. And um, he's he's a great dude. He's a really great guy and really pushing for this record. I mean, we're all everybody's really getting behind it, which is killer. It's and, a- uh, you know, and a side note from that is we had um, I managed the absence mm-hmm. and from going out on tour with Venom Inc., um, they are managed by Johnny Z from uh, Crazed Management. And also everybody knows Johnny from uh, Megaforce Records. You know, he signed Metallica and Anthrax and all all that stuff. Um, Him and uh, Johnny and I, we developed a relationship over the course of the past six months, and it got to a point where he strongly wanted to work with the absence. Um, So now he is a co-manager with the absence, which is amazing because, you know, guys like Johnny can pick up the phone and somebody will listen to what Johnny has to say. You know, versus like, I mean, I may be like, I may call somebody and be like, hey, uh, could you, they just hang their phone up on me. But, uh, you know, 
he doesn't have that same uh, you know, <laughs> reaction. He doesn't, huh? that, he doesn't have the same reaction, which is good. And so, thank, thank God for that, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's good to have people like that as friends, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, fuck yeah. Totally and, great. and co-managers is even better. Yeah, what you said, what you said. <laughs> and and so now, we are, it's, it's, it's looking to be a new and bright and shiny 2018, which is... I mean, finally, because I mean, the last record came out in 2011, I think, mm -hmm. is when Enemy Unbound came out, which is damn near career suicide, as you know, many will say. But you know, this the ship took a little bit longer to get off the ground, but it's it's up and running now, and it's built to kill. So here we go. And now, have you already finished this album? Oh yeah, totally done. Everything's turned in, artwork's done, ready to rock. Okay, so then, what could you tell us about like? where it was recorded and who produced it and mixed it and all those aspects. Okay. Um, well, Taylor and I fully produced and recorded everything, 100% mm -hmm. of all of it. Um, so I did all the, I did all the tracking of everything at, you know, our studio and it was shipped over to David Castillo at Ghost Ward Studios in Sweden. He's, uh, he's responsible for, uh, some killer killer work like most of the bloodbath records are um you know from him and uh most of the catatonia albums um he's worked with soil work sepultura fucking baby metal i mean <laughs> you name it he's done so much over there um and basically his uh his partner in crime is thomas pleck Ewanson, mm -hmm. and uh Pleck mastered this record for us and both of both of these guys we did like a swedish one-two punch you know <laughs> Because if, if you want it to sound Scandinavian, you kind of got to go to the there you go go. To place where the water is, and you got to <laughs> dump it in the water and leave it up to them. Um, yeah, so uh, so David at Ghost Ward and Thomas over at the Panic Room in Sweden. And now, did you guys have any guests on this album? Uh, we did. We did have two, but we had to um, we had to remove one of them just because the spot didn't really it was too busy. Mm -hmm. um, so now the only thing that we have on there not not the only that makes it downplayed, <laughs> but we do a cover on the record, and we have uh, Bjorn from Soilwork singing on it, Ooh, cool. which is which is a total dream come true for me <laughs> because I've been a Soilwork fan since I first heard Predator's Portrait. Uh, hard fan so i like you should have seen that I was giddy like a little schoolboy as soon as it, i was like really he said yes i was like awesome <laughs> it was pretty killer no no not sure how much you can reveal at this early date but but what can fans expect from this album jeremy um well if you think of writers of the plague this is like as aggressive as that so this is kind of like a part two to writers um very, very catchy, very groovy, you know, everything that you could come to expect from the Absence Records, very melodic, um, but it's really fucking pissed off. It's really pissed off, <laughs> which, so, is, which I was just actually rehearsing uh, yesterday, and my son was sitting behind me. I had a set of headphones on at my, uh, I have my drums at my house right now. I have them in my studio, and I finished this song. Well, before I played it, I was like, man, this song's hard to play, and as soon as I finished it, he was like, wow that's fast and i'm like right i'm like what the fuck why why is it so difficult why are we writing such difficult music but i guess it keeps us young and it's you know i'm still pissed off i guess ultimately in the end i'm still pissed off so i'm still playing death metal so, here we are. so let's talk a little bit about this single a gift for the obsessed what is this song about and why did you guys choose this song to release as the single um it's you know, the song is about basically any of us you know, like a gift for the obsessed like any of us artists or anybody really that's creative that has has something that they achieve like a like a level of nirvana um so like the chorus goes what do you see in your moments of madness complete euphoric lunacy you're content in chaos and that's a gift for the obsessed basically it's like a like a payoff it's a, it's the, it's the, the payload, the pay dirt, everything. Whenever you get to that moment, it makes all the other chaos that you're dealing with in your life and everything and all the upheaval that every, I mean, cause it's, it's hard work to, it's hard work to do this kind of stuff. It's hard work to put music out, to pour love into that, especially with real life knocking at your door. You have to, 
also pay the bills, you know, just like everybody else. And it's, it's that moment whenever it all really happens and it comes into total synchronicity and it, uh, everything starts to vibrate. Um, and we led with this because the song has such a, such a powerful message lyrically. And Jamie is a, my favorite singer in death metal and his lyrics on this are wizard like i mean it's it's pretty amazing he's he's written stuff where i'm like wow all right well that's some deep shit okay buddy <laughs> i'm like that's deep cool <laughs> and uh, are you guys planning to do like a little touring and stuff with the band at all in 2018 uh, yes, it hasn't been announced yet, but mm-hmm. we have some uh, we have some touring coming up for sure. Okay, Jason, let's talk a little bit about gear. Uh, what kind of kit are you currently playing? Because it sure is pretty. No, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm playing a Crush Wingate kit. Wingate is like a very rare, um, exotic wood. It's like a, it's dark naturally. I mean, there's no actual paint job on my drums. It's just the color of the wood. It's um, stained. Uh, it's not stained. Pardon me. It's a uh, just has a matte finish on it. So it's a crushed wingate kit. Um, snare is a 13 by 7 hand hammered nickel over steel. And I am playing all Pisces, uh, Pisces symbols. Um, I have a big range of those signature crashes and stuff like that, and dark hi hats, um, Evans drum heads, Axis pedals, um, Klotz cables. Those guys over at Klotz are amazing. Like, being a drummer, I was never really like a cable guy, but mm-hmm. being a studio owner, I'm, I became a cable guy, and I had no idea, I had no idea the dramatic difference it it made to have good cabling. Like I was like, oh yeah, it's fine, it's just a mic cable, and then I started doing like shootouts between mic cables, and wow, it's it's unbelievable the difference that a good microphone cable makes or a good guitar cable makes. Um, so anyways, those guys over at Klotz are awesome, and they make great, great equipment. Uh, I recommend that for anybody. As a matter of fact, I just got a package in the mail like a couple of days ago, and uh, yay, Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> some, some well-needed stuff around here, so it was cool. Um, Vic Firth drumsticks. And I think that about sums it up for me. Oh, Aston microphones. Those those guys are great, too. I used Aston on uh, all the vocals for this record. So uh, Aston Origin, which is a really, really fantastic transparent vocal mic. Well, you can use it anywhere, really, but I mean, it's I use it for vocal mics, which is cool. And, and Jeremy, what are your thoughts on all these like young drummers coming out that are so speed and blast beat oriented? It's like that's all they could think about. Well, I mean, I don't know. I always loved that shit when I was, you know, yeah. 15, 15 <laughs> through 25. I, I loved it all, too. I just... I had a harder time playing it. It just wasn't like, I didn't have like an innate ability to just do that. I had to really, really work for it. And I, I typically end up hitting harder, which makes it even more difficult to play blast beats because, you know, the dynamic, the dynamic velocities there start to, start to, it's hard to play hard mm-hmm. and play fast, you know, um, unless you're Dave Lombardo, then you can just do that. So, <laughs> um, but I mean, hey, different strokes for different folks. It's mm-hmm. it's cool. I mean, I back it all. I mean, as long as people are being creative and doing what they do, that's mm-hmm. cool. I've I've never joined the the legions of people who are upset with tappers or or triggered drummers or uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's all difficult, no matter which way you cut it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I mean. I, I do I do have a special place in my heart for when a drummer is kicking the ever living shit out of their drum set though. I mean that's that makes me happy when you're like, God damn, that snare is getting its ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> so who are some of your favorite drummers then that do that kind of thing? Um I'll tell you what, I mean, pretty much at the top of my list is Eloy from Sepultura. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm really fortunate that I get to work with that cat because I mean, I don't know. He hits those drums like they owe him money. <laughs> The for 90 minutes straight, he's just playing like a maniac and, you know, never winded, never tired. Well, at least he doesn't look it. You know? um, it's it's cool. It's really cool. I like his drumming. I really like Ray from Korn. He's another guy who hits really hard and he has a fantastic technique. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, going back to playing like really, really fast drummers is Ken uh, from Aborted. He is 
unreal fast, as I'm sure we all know here listening. But he's <laughs> he's unreal fast. But you watch him play, and it's effortless. And he's also still hitting very, very much hard. Like he's got a good good technique about him. So I guess those are those are a couple of drummers that just off the off the top of my list right there. And, and having been around the block, so to speak, Jeremy, and seeing the metal scene evolve over the years, what are your thoughts on the like the many aspects of metal music coming out today with all these different genres and all that? Uh, well, I mean, it was always meant to happen, I suppose, mm-hmm. like that. I and mean, there was it was already starting to splinter towards the the late 90s it was already splintering into many 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 different forms you know given given quote unquote new metal bands like corn and stuff um fear factory kind of you know split off um i mean it's cool i mean i'm not i'm not too much of a big fan of like the whole gent thing that that goes on but but some of it i can get into Mm -hmm. but for the most part no not really i i've really been like i've been like falling into traps of like ambient black metal because it's so atmospheric, and I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of some of that stuff that I've been hearing. Like, there was this band, uh, I believe it's pronounced Shrine. It's spelled with a Z, or maybe it's just Shrine, I don't know. They're Icelandic. As a matter of fact, I just heard them, uh, my wife and I, we went to Sweden, and on the way home, it was on the airline, because we were on Iceland Air, <laughs> and it was on the, uh, yeah, it was cool. They had, like, ten metal bands on there, and I was, like, listening around, and I was like, wow, I, I like this a lot. It was pretty cool. It was brutal, it was aggressive, you know. Um, so, you know, realistically, wherever, wherever it's going, wherever it's splintering off to, I mean, it's kind of like a natural order of progression because we already have Metallica and Black Sabbath. There are, they're at the top and then we're all just trying to be like them, just faster, slower, wetter, drier, you know, it's just all, it's all umbrellaed underneath that really. And now Jeremy, besides the absence, do you have any other musical projects going on? As a matter of fact, I have a, uh, I have a bunch. Um, <laughs> I um, I just played. Uh, I just CD was just released. I'm singing on this project called Skin Eater, um, and we just released an EP, and uh, that's with a guy from In Thy Dreams, uh, Taylor from the uh, from the Absence mixed it. I think I mastered it. Um, Joey plays a solo on it. Uh, the guitar player Thorbjorn from um, Sabaton, he plays most of the solos on the whole EP. Um, some cool stuff, really cool music, like Sweet Death, kind of like Grave Worship a bit, mm-hmm. you know, but then also a little more, a little more melodic. Sounds pretty cool. Um, and then I have a, a black metal band with Taylor called Drit Skit, which Drit is uh, shit in Norwegian and Skit <laughs> is shit in Swedish, so it's. <laughs> Basically, the name of the band is Shit Shit, and it's it's kind of poking fun and having a bit of fun at, at black metal, but it's extremely serious. We'd already released a we released a CD about two years ago with um, we did a cover of Alice in Chains' uh, Angry Chair. Mm-hmm. Um, so keeping kind of like a like a bit of a motif there, we have this new record that's coming out very soon. Um, well, hell, I mean. Why don't? How about we do this? Why don't we just play one of the songs right here? We'll play this song I'm talking about. We'll okay. The show. We'll do it. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Um, well, then this song is um, called "Something in the Way" by Nirvana, and we did it a la black metal style, a la drit skit style, and it's uh, it's extremely haunting. It's very very haunting. You know, um, my son loves the Nirvana song, anyways, but. He really likes this version of it. He's like, man, I don't know which one I like better. And I'm like, well, I think that's good. <laughs> so, so if we're if we're creating covers to where you don't know if you want to hear the original or the cover, then you know maybe that's the desired effect. Um, and uh, this band has some has a really cool guest, uh, two guest appearances. One is my wife is singing on it, and um, that's on the other track that's on the record. Uh, we did a really really long song and then a short song. So it's just two songs, but it's it's for sure an epic little EP we're putting out. Um, and also the other guest uh, vocalist is uh, Andreas Kisser from um, <laughs> Sepultura. He's the guitar player, so this will be his first time ever singing <laughs> on our recording, you know, other than if he did anything with Sepultura, which is pretty cool. And when I had asked him, I was like, hey, would you mind doing guest vocals? And he was like, uh, well, I've never been asked to do that before, only, <laughs> only guitars. And I was like, well, you know, no time like the present. Let's- Let's, let's fucking mix it up. <laughs> so um, 
that band, Dritskid, and then also that Skin Eater band. And then I have another Swedish uh, Swedish death metal band, which is Grave Worship again, like HM2, where I sing in. And I actually, I've written a couple of the songs on guitar. Um, and that, that band's called Gore Gang, and that's with Taylor from The Absence. Him and I are in like 100 bands together. <laughs> it's just, we just get bored and we just... We just do lots of stuff, so it's it's pretty cool. But we know that the absence needs to be the absence. And if we start clogging it up with everything else that we're influenced by, that's where I feel like bands start to lose sight of their original intent when they start to try and make their band that got, you know, got notoriety, when they start to change that to be another animal than it really is. You know, it'd be like the Slayer guys incorporating, like, I don't know, new metal into it they may be really into like industrial metal you know but i mean it would be like weird as hell if the next slayer record came out and it was industrial it's i'm a firm believer in start a side project and then you can get all your creativity bug out without uh you know kind of like destroying like the legacy and or the you know the momentum that you have behind what you have going that's me some other people argue that and they're like you know, <laughs> You should be able to do whatever you want. It's like, well, I mean, while you can, just because you can, does that mean you should? That's right? true. <laughs> that is very true. So now, Jeremy, what are some of the best sites for people to uh, learn more about uh, the absence? I mean, what websites are, are the best places to go to figure out what's going on with them, what you guys have coming up, where they could pick up merch, all that kind of stuff? I mean, I suppose it's just Facebook, you know, really, mm -hmm. really these days. I remember, like, when I first started the band, it was really important to have a website, but I don't know that that's so important anymore. Um, not not in the same, not to the same uh, degree. Um, so Facebook, uh, I believe it's the Absence Official. Uh, we're on Instagram. Um, we're on, you know, we have a band camp. We have, if you go to M Theory Audio web, uh, their website, you can find anything, any information there. Um, you know, the basic, or you just Google the absence, and then there you go. It's like that easy. And a lot of times, your Facebook page has all the links to all the other sites, too, so it's pretty yeah. convenient there. So, okay, so there you guys have it. The Absence are back this year with a new album on a new label, and uh, you can find more about this on their Facebook page. And, Jeremy, thank you so much for coming on the show with us to tell us about what's going on with you and all your projects and The Absence, and all the best to you in the new year. Thanks. Thanks for having me.